CJ, if you would, please pull up that super chat from Kim again for $50. That's this is this is amazing, and I'm I'm actually I'm really grateful for the opportunity to hopefully share some useful wisdom on a deep topic here. What four reasons? What four reasons should a person be ready to die? Or I think that means I think she meant there for what reasons should a person be ready to die? And knowing Kim and where this is coming from, she is someone who has a deep spiritual grounding that very much uh, informs her relationship with the message as a Christian who knows that the only manifestation of those Christian ethics in politics is libertarianism. The non-aggression principle, self-ownership. And Kim, if you have any follow-ups, uh, reasons equal causes. Yeah, causes, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at here, Kim. Thank you. And I hope I'm representing you well in characterizing your spirituality and the relationship that you have to freedom as, as a result of that. And the things that we've talked about in you know, what you have come to admire in me as an activist who has shown over and over again that I'm willing to put my life on the line for certain things. And th that that's a related but a different question. I'll answer first, I hope, quickly here. And, and risking life is not the same as giving your life. And th this covers a lot, I think, of, of what scenarios Kim's question raises. Because people say that I'm brave for my activism, for running for president on a treasonous platform. Uh, for, you know, loading a shotgun in civil disobedience, for facing down police officers, for living uh, a lifestyle of civil disobedience. And I tell people, and it's a very important idea to break down, is that I'm not brave. I don't get to do these things because I am brave. I mean, I'm not like, I'm not a coward, <laughs> obviously, right? But I'm not, it, when, when it comes to courage, I don't, I've, I, I don't think I'm I'm on some special scale. I'm probably braver than most. Yeah, sure. Um, and this is a really important meaning distinction that's not just rhetorical and sort of what is courage? You know, is it courageous when you know exactly what you're doing, when you know what the risk and reward is and you make the decision based on that? No, it's courageous when you don't know, when you're being shot at and you have no idea and you say, I'm going to do what I see is the right thing, knowing only that it can hurt me and not knowing the risks and not knowing the reward. That's courage. That's what courage is for, for those times of uncertainty. That's not what makes me special. What makes me special in the realm that people mistake for bravery is confidence in my calculations and risk reward. And it's really two simple things. One, on the, on the risk side, most people see getting arrested and they just, whoop, can't calculate. It's just, they, they might as well be death. And then on the reward side, what I'm able to see is all of the benefits in freedom that most people don't. And so I'm able to weigh the risk reward with confidence and say, okay, so, you know, I, yes, every time I go and interact with a cop, especially in, a, in an arrest scenario for civil disobedience, yeah, my, my risk of death goes up a little bit. But I can put that in a risk reward scenario where I go, it's, it's worth it. And that's the other thing, I suppose, is that, you know, a lot of people aren't willing to, to, to do anything that risks their life, you know? Well, now what's the quote from the one of the founders and it's tickling the back of my mind is, is, is life so sweet that you would rather live on your knees than die on your feet? And that gets us more to the heart of Kim's question. For those times when you don't have that risk re reward analysis to be able to weigh things against. 
and you just go, I have to be willing to die for this. And I think of Spock, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, as he said when he made that great cinematic sacrifice. Should you be willing to die to give up your life to save another? I think so. I think that's a part of what makes humanity great and one of the most beautiful parts of human nature. Why that cinematic moment so tugged at my heartstrings and has stuck with me through the decades, I remember Spock. Yeah, given his life to save the ship. That we would do that. And when you realize to go back to, you know, for what causes, and, and, and you weigh that realization against the risk-reward scenario, well, here's the reward that I see that a lot of people don't, just based on an honest understanding of government. So we are saving lives with what we are doing. Every time you speak up for justice, for freedom, for ethics, for doing the right thing. Every time you do something to rein in government power today, could be a life saved in the future. And when you see that as the reward, there's no risk too great. And really, to put it in context, the risk of death today in confronting the state is so insignificant, at least historically speaking. You raise a voice against the king, and you find yourself crucified. Not today. What's the worst that I got to worry about here, Jim? Getting censored on the internet? Being, being digitally shut down. Hey, I've still got my 10 acres in the mountains. I've still got, you know, my self-sufficiency here. I've still got my smile every morning. You can't take that from me. Not today, anyway. There are some people who get killed in speaking up and protesting. If you do it, I don't want to say the wrong way, but if you take some certain risks, like, you know, uh, what was it that Hastings, the Rolling Stone reporter who was going after guys at the Pentagon, by name, dies in a mysterious car crash? I don't need to do that. I don't need to go after individuals. That's not the bigger fight anyway. That's not where we're most helpful. And it's such a beautiful coincidence in today's reality that the things that you do to save the most lives in the future in the realm of standing up to injustice in the world carry relatively little risk. So, the cause of freedom, standing up to government injustice, really is the cause of human life itself. And I think every cause that falls into that category of standing up to systemic injustice, that is a danger to the future, is something worth dying for. And we live in a time when we can throw ourselves into this cause and know that if we adhere to our own principles, to ethics, to the non-aggression principle, that we can stand up with so much confidence in what we're doing that really the risk of death is so insignificant. In the fight for freedom, it shouldn't factor into our calculations at all. Let's <laughs> go.